Everybody told me that growing up, you know, everybody wants to be a football player. You know, everybody wants to be a professional athlete. They, they want to do something like that. And I always dreamed of being a motorbike racer. And there's never been a second where I didn't want that <laughs> since for, since I was born, I think. <laughs> but, you know, like it gets to a stage where you're growing up a little bit, you're finishing up school and whether it be your parents, your friends, family, everybody starts to remind you that you need to focus on real life and maybe this little dream that you had isn't gonna work out. You know, I used to get told sort of quite regular that how many people want to do that? Like how many people want to be a bike racer? There's a lot, you know, is it, is it actually going to happen? You know how many people actually fulfill that dream? There isn't, there isn't many. So maybe you should just, uh, you know, focus on a real job, a real trade or something like that. And, and then you can still ride bikes in your, as a, as a hobby, you know, in your, in your spare time. But that was never something that I even really thought about. It was, I used to get told that all the time, yet it just went in one, one ear and out the other because I just always had that belief that, nah, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Like, I'm gonna do this. Like, I wanna be a, professional bike racer, whether it was a motocross rider or a super bike rider, I want to race motorbikes as my job. Like, that was my dream. It wasn't to be a millionaire. It wasn't to be famous. It was just to race motorbikes as my job. Like, that's literally all, all I ever wanted to do. And um, it's so nice for me to you know, sort of look back on that and look back at all the people who told me that it wouldn't happen. To look back now and go, I, I did that, I did what I said I was gonna do. Hi, I'm Davy Todd, I'm 26 years old. I've been racing motorbikes uh, for 20 years now. And I'm now a Isle of Man TT and British suit bike racer. So I grew up from a young age. Um, the only thing I ever really knew was watching bike racing and all kinds of bike racing on TV, whether it be motocross or super bikes, MotoGP, TT, whatever it was, uh, I was I was watching it. My dad was watching it. So for Christmas, uh, just not long after my third birthday, uh, my dad got me a Honda QR50, my first ever bike, and. Um, I was so over the moon, <laughs> like obviously um, I'd been watching all this bike racing on TV and was super, super happy that I'd, I'd got my own bike and never wanted to be off it and rode it every chance I got, rain or shine. Uh, I was on the bike and wanted to go to tracks and was really desperate then to to move on from that and race when, when you're allowed to start racing at the, the legal age, at six years old, you're allowed to start racing motocross. So by this time I had a KTM 50, a more competitive uh, auto class bike and started racing. My first race I did at Woolly Grange, um, North East Motocross Club and I finished fifth place in uh, yeah, my first ever race and never fell out of love of it. You know, just, uh, just kept going from that day and like if anything, I, I love it more now than I did then, if that's even possible. First memories I sort of have of, of riding, um, it was a field just across from the, the house we used to live in uh, on Coach Road. Um, we, my dad used to take me across to this field on my, on my QR50 and I'd just ride round and round and round and, and uh, and absolutely loved it, you know. I just um, from the, that first day, I remember him taking me out on on Christmas Day, and uh, yeah, I don't know how. I, I honestly don't know how, but I could just ride, you know, straight straight away. I could ride a motorbike. I, I don't, not even sure if I'd rode a bicycle at this stage, but um, 
but just got straight to it with, uh, with the engine, I guess. wear a helmet. Shall we walk? It's not been started in 23 years. Why will it not work? I don't understand. My leg hurts now. out of action snetton next weekend because my leg is very tired. Oh they did ring the switch. It was not me. So uh feels a bit awkward but outside my old house where I grew up. It's just saying it looks a lot nicer now. They've done <laughs> done a really good job of it to be honest but grew up here, came out Christmas morning um I don't know what year it was when I was three years old. 90, 9, 98, 98, and um, come out and rode this bike when it when it ran, <laughs> and rode it around the field um, that I got for Christmas, and just, just that's where the addiction come from, I think, <laughs> and the issues. It's the first time it's been on, isn't it? Now, I've sat on the back and. Spun round here on Christmas Day and just had the best buzz of my life. Riding motorbikes and um, been hooked ever since. Can't get away from it. It's honestly hard to say what I enjoy the most about racing. Um, winning is one of the the big things. It's got to be up there. You know, I, I, it's an addiction that feeling of winning. I've always been competitive my whole life. I'm not sure it's just in me or if it's because of the bike racing growing up but always being competitive and always wanted to win and and I think that's what's driven me on throughout my career throughout my life to get better and better racing because I always want to be better I always want to win and and I love that but I just have a love for riding bikes as well I, I love the atmosphere at a bike race the people around racing in general, I just feel like it's the best place to be ever. I, I'd never, I never want to be anywhere else to be honest and these days I never really am anywhere else. <laughs> I spend all my time at the track and I would not have it any other way. Honestly, the part of it that, that makes me want to be better, I, I think I just always have this feeling within myself that you, you got to have the belief in yourself that, that you can do it and I've always been good at just jumping in at the deep end you know when people say I'll oh, maybe go in a lower class first or maybe you know I expect less I just expect the more straight away and expect to win or expect to jump in the hardest competition um, possible and I, it's like sink or swim sort of thing and you just learn to adapt the people around you it's learning the riding techniques from the guys as well and learning lines learning everything that you can from other riders but also learning away from the track as well and and seeing what you can do better where are your weak and where are your weaknesses what what can you improve and i've just always been that passionate about it about winning and I hate losing that much that I just will do what whatever it whatever it takes to to succeed you know 
So it's a funny question, like a lot of people always ask and, and say, oh, you must have always dreamed of being a super bike racer or dreamed about being a TT racer. And the honest truth is, no, I, I, I didn't really. I grew up pretty much, <laughs> most of my life, I, I wanted to be a motocross rider. And um, that's what I raced as a kid. I started from six years old and moved through the ranks and was always strong um, racing motocross and, and competitive and always just had that belief in myself that I was going to be a motocross rider and I, that's all I ever wanted to do to be a professional motocross rider and as with most motocross guys you have a lot of injuries over the years and even at such a young age at like 15, 16 years old, I had like a, a really bad break in my leg and I didn't walk for six months and the surgeons told me, I remember at the time the surgeon saying, you know, if you break this again or damage the metal work in your leg in the next, in the next year, you know, we're going to have to talk about fusing it maybe or, um, or worse. So. I didn't really know what to do at this stage. Um, a lot of people then, a lot of family and friends were like, you know, sort of give up on the racing for now and do something else. And I just, that that's never been an option for me, no matter what. Uh, not, not racing is, is not something that I can bear thinking about. So I uh, thought, what can I do at the time? And a couple of friends of mine had, had moved over from motocross to supermoto. So I thought, you know, this is on time. I can motocross bikes and I can maybe use my motocross bike when I could get back walking again. I use my motocross bike and ride a bit of supermoto and, and see how I get on it. It's smoother, smoother ground. It should be, it should be a, a little bit, I don't know if safe is the word, but less impact on, on my leg. So went over to supermoto and really enjoyed that, loved it, um, was twice runner-up uh, in the British Championship in my first couple of years. Um, just it got unlucky, uh, to be honest, the second time my bike blew up at the final round. But um, at this stage, was did a, did a year of Europeans as well. And at this, at this point, sort of realised there wasn't so much in the way of a career in supermoto. It was a great sport and I loved it. And, I still think now it should have a bigger audience than it does. But yeah, I had to I had to move on from it because you know there was not there's no money there. I, I gathered some really good sponsors and met some really good people who I'm still um, still well in touch with and, and helped me to this day. But still, like there was in terms of me thinking about it as a career, this is this is. I, I want to race as my job. Um, I had to think of something else because there, there was just not that. At the top of the British Championship and racing competitively at Europeans, yet there was still no uh, no making a living there, let's say. So that was a point, again, seeing some other friends of mine, um, Malachi Mitchell Thomas, I, I grew up racing motocross with, seen him go super motor, seen him jump on sports bikes and a couple of the friends, um, Ben Stafford and then Christian Iden as well, Keith Farmer, all ex motor guys that had moved over to sports bikes and, and, and gone really well. So said, you know, well, I, I can take over a few of the, my sponsors and people around me that would help me. They'll come over and help me on a, on a, on a 600. I, I sell my super motor bikes and go, go racing um, sports bikes and see how we get on. Like again, it's that same thing of jumping in at the deep end because I didn't know how to ride a sports bike. I'd never even sat on one in my entire life. And we just made this decision at, at the end of th 2014 and said, uh, we're gonna do this next year. And I'd never even rode one now. And I was already planning to go race BSB and as it turns out, you're not allowed to race BSB as a as a novice <laughs> with your orange bib on. You have to do 10 races before you can get the license grade to, to race at BSB. So 
what's the next best thing, it was Thunderspot. So we just said, okay, we'll do a couple of track days and go and go racing and, and see what happens and jumping at the deep end and, and see if we can swim and uh, literally did just that. A um, couple of track days, learned how to get my knee down and was like, okay, we'll might, maybe all right, we'll see how we get on. And um, Thundersport that year, the first round was the only round that I wasn't on the podium. Um, after that, I was on the podium every round and um, ended up winning the championship, uh, 600 elite championship in my first year. Uh, then obviously moved on to Stock 600 the, the following year after that and uh, yeah, uh, people saying oh, it's, it's a completely different thing, don't expect to be in the points, if you, if you can get a couple of top 15 results, like you should be proud of yourself, don't expect too much but me for me, I just wanted to go race bikes and I want to be competitive and um, ended up winning my second ever BSB race. Um, I was fourth in the first one at Silverson, second one was at Alton Park and ended up winning by 10 seconds or something. But, but I had a lot of uh, mechanical issues, let's say, throughout the season. Won two races, won that, that one in the, the final round of Brands Hatch and thought, to be honest, that, that was me sorted. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with, with teams and what have you and ended up uh, ended up out of a ride the following year, even even after the sort of year that I'd had. It's a, it's a pretty vicious environment, let's say. <laughs> Signing for the Malenko by Padgett's team has, has been awesome for me. Um, the funny thing is, a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's all right for you. <laughs> We're your good team and the good bikes and everything, but, you know, it's not, it's not where I started. I didn't just jump in with that and... Um, you know, I feel very grateful to, to be with a team like the one that I am with now. But they're a, they're an awesome team. You know, it's just um, from the, I knew from the first time that I worked with them in 2019. I did the Northwest TT and also Grand Prix, but just on a 600 for Padgett's. and um, and I loved it. Then you know, the family environment of the team is like. What really suits me is like the family environment. Everything's super relaxed. Everything's, you know, that everybody's there to just really enjoy themselves. And that's the feeling that you get, but everybody's there to win. Um, which makes, a, a, for me, an awesome combination. Yeah, I've worked with like both sides of teams, very professional factory teams, and then, um, really um, family oriented teams, family run teams and uh, yeah I've got the, I feel like I've got the perfect balance with um, with the Malenko by Padgett's team, three awesome bikes that I get to ride for him with the, the 600, the super stock bike and the super bike and I think nearly everywhere we've gone this year we've been proud of how we've done, never, never really had a disappointing result let's say. This year, it's just um, Superstock. I've been begging for a chance in Superstock BSB to to prove myself that I'm not just a road racer that that I can race on short circuits as well. And Clive and the team were good enough to to give me that opportunity and uh, get out there and and prove that I can be a short circuit racer as well, not not just a road racer. So. I've I've gone out there this year. We were currently second in the championship and and battling for the championship basically with four rounds to go it's um, it's an exciting spot to be in and the road races that we've done we end up winning uh, becoming Southern 100 champion um, won the Armoury race of legends four second places at the Northwest and battled for the win in every single race that we were in uh, some awesome TT results got my first podium there um, after going through a lot in that in that couple of weeks um, you know it's just uh, it's great I, I love being with the team um, and I, which is pretty good to be honest because I'm with them a lot seeing as I've pushed them to do all these extra extra races that weren't originally on the calendar and they've been so good and so open with me that they said okay yeah let's go do these 
extra race that you want to do, Armoy, the Southern Scarborough we've got coming up, Scarborough Gold Cup, which I'm excited about. It's my local race. It's really exciting and, you know, hats off to the team because they've, um, not not many teams would do what, what they've done, whether they're like, it's not in our budget to be doing something like that, but yeah, we'll go do it if that's what you want to do. So, um, yeah, it's really good for me and uh, it means I get to, I get to ride as much as possible and I wouldn't rather be anywhere else than at a racetrack racing my bike around, so it's a, it's a perfect situation. After my first year in BSB in 2016 in Superstock 600, like I said, I thought things were sort of made and set up for me and all the teams were still asking for a, a ton of money basically to, to sign for them for the next year. and. I'm not from a rich family, you know, we didn't have that money and I, I had a few sponsors on board but certainly not enough to pay the sort of money that people were asking for and I didn't really know what I was going to do at this stage and finally get, got some support from Kawasaki. Um, they put me into this team and the team basically didn't really want me there. Um, they wanted to focus on the 1000cc bikes and uh, I was riding a 600 for them, but they, they didn't really have so much interest in that. So I ended up, um, I got a podium at the first race of the season, and then after that, after a lot of drama, I ended up parting ways with the team at round two. Uh, but then was left with nothing. I'd invested a bunch of money into that, um, a, a lot of money that I'd paid the team, 20, 20 grand actually, that I'd paid the team that year to, to race for them, which was, honestly, that's a good deal, a really good deal. There's not, not many people um, who were paying for rides getting ones that cheap, so it was, um, but I, I'd, I'd saved up all my sponsorship, all my, I'd worked super hard during the winter, saving up like every single penny that I could to, to get this money together and give it to this team, and then, uh, and then end up parting ways and didn't get any of that money back or anything like that. So it was then like, what am I gonna do? Like, I, I don't wanna give up, but that was the closest I've ever been to stopping racing in my in my life uh, after that year, because I had nothing. Like, I had no ride. I didn't have money to go buy a bike at the time. Um, my dad was out of work and he, he was like, I'm gutted, I can't help you, because, you know, I would, but I, uh, it was he was out of work, so I literally was without a bike, and I didn't know really what what to do. So I was going around um, selling insurance um, for an insurance company, um, going around racetracks. So I was like, so I can work in a bit of network, and I might get the chance to meet someone. So I was selling insurance, going around tracks and everything, doing what I could to earn, um, earn some money, and then. Um, a few friends were out of the TT or they, they were just going out to the TT. I just got there, I think. And they was like, oh, you need to come out. And I was like, I can't, I, like, I can't afford a flight to the Isle Man. Um, and then the next thing, um, I was like, oh, that's a good idea, actually. I'll tell the insurance company that I'd sell them a ton of insurance if they send me to the Isle of Man, to the TT. So. I'd never been before, I'd, I'd watched it, I've obviously seen it on TV, but never really crossed my mind about doing anything like that. Um, I just was always focused on whatever I was doing at the time, whether that was motocross, supermoto or BSB. So I'd never really thought about it, but my friends, uh, it was actually Tom Bouvermos, um, that was the one who was like pestering me, saying, you need to come out, you need to come out. So I got the insurance company, uh, my boss convinced that if he booked my flights to the Isle of Man, I'd, I'd sort the rest and I'd sell him so much insurance. And uh, convinced him, he was like, where are you going to stay though? And I was like, I don't know, I'll, just, I'll, I'll wing it, it'll be all right. <laughs> and I literally had nowhere to stay or anything like that, or no money to buy somewhere to stay. So I was like, oh, if I got a, I'll take a big jacket, you know, if I got to sleep in the toilets or something like that, then that's what I got to do. Like, it's one of them. And um, so I got out there and was sort of wandered about, got a bus to the paddock and 
wandered about the paddock for a bit. It was raining and every, there was no one there. I was like, oh God, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Like, um, I think it rained for the first couple of days, but I, I met up with Tom and then the team that he was working for at the time um, was sponsored by uh, a woman, Elaine Worthington. Um, and met them guys, met the team and everything. They were running Sam West and they said, oh, like if you help out a little bit, you can um, you can sleep in the back of the truck, just on the floor in the back of the truck. So I was like, perfect, that'll, that'll do me. <laughs> um, so I helped out a little bit with whatever they needed doing and, and I got somewhere dry to sleep, which was ideal. And then, um, yeah, I remember going over it was still in practice week and going over to the top of uh, the top of Bray Hill and watching the bikes come by for the first time I've ever seen anything like ro road racing <laughs> and it was just absolutely mind blown to be honest um, I thought this this is absolutely insane but it's exactly what I want to do like I just got that feeling straight away and you you do look and go it's nuts but i was like i want a go at this like how how do i go about getting a go at this and i wonder if there's like some way that i can get involved and um anyway sp spent the next two weeks over there at the tt and and meeting a few different people and what have you met um met the organizers and stuff like that. And they ended up saying, would you be interested in racing the TT like next year? Usually the normal route to the TT is to race the Manx Grand Prix first. And then if you do well enough, then go to the TT. But the guys there, Paul Phillips, I met and he said, you know, if, um, if you want to come straight to the TT, we'll, we'll, we'll try and support you with course knowledge and learning the TT in the best way possible. Um, if you come straight to the TT, if you, if you're interested and, and I said, I, I would love to do that. Like definitely, um, I've got no team or anything, <laughs> but I'm up for it. Like I want to do it and hopefully I can sort something out. And then not long after that, I, uh, through some contacts who I'd met, um, a guy, Harry Corbett, long shot racing. He, um, he gave me a go on one of his bikes. He called me up one day and said, oh, do you want to, uh, do you want to come and do a road race? And this was not long after, not long after the TT. Do you want to come and do scaries? And I was never heard of scaries in my life, but um, do you want to come and do scaries? It's a road race, come over, like it won't cost you anything. We've got a sponsor who'll pay for your ferry over because I like, couldn't afford that or anything to do with the racing actually. Um, come over and, and race if you'd like it, then we'll maybe do some more. If you don't, you don't. It's, it's one of them. Um, and I said, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll come. I'd not even thought twice about it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have a go. Like I had no other opportunity at the time. That's the only route I could go and uh went over and yeah from the first day ride and um absolutely loved it got a different whole different rush from road racing that that i'd never really had before I love all different kinds of bike racing as i've said but road racing was there was just something different there was some real buzz to it i don't know if it's because of the danger or what but there was uh yeah something special there and not only that, the atmosphere around the racing was the best atmosphere I'd ever seen in a race paddock in my life. It was, everybody was just, everybody was mates, everybody was enjoying it. It was just a, a really nice place to be. So I said, let's go, like we'll, we'll do some more races. And the sponsor of the team at the time ended up paying for my, to go home, but then to come back out, bring my, I had a little, caddy uh, little little caddy van at the time and um, I put a mattress in the back of there uh, I, it was just, I say a mattress is like a bit of sponge in the back of there <laughs> um, and went out to not now to do the next three or four races or something that we had out there um, couldn't afford to go back and forth so I was like I'll just sleep in the back of my van and um, figure it out you know <laughs> 
but it was uh, it was easy just staying over there. So I went and stayed over there, and the, those guys covered the the costs of, that it needed to go racing. We were using secondhand tyres, secondhand bikes and bits and whatever we could sort of catch from <laughs> other teams that they were throwing stuff away. And we we're like, we'll have that, we'll fix it or whatever. And um, just loved it, but got some good results as well. And fortunately caught the eye of John Burroughs, uh, the Burroughs engineering team. Uh, like well-known team in the road racing world and um, I knew them at that stage like knew who they were massively because they were the top Irish national road race team the, the best bikes best presented and they were winning them all with Derek Shields at the time they were winning all the races and when I got the opportunity they they said do you want to come and do the last last race of the year for us at, at Kill Lane and I said, yeah, I was like, I loved, loved that opportunity. He said, it's not an opportunity for the year after. It's just a one-off. Like we've got a super twin there that if you want to ride, you can ride. And um, ended up actually riding a big bike from as well. I'd never rode a <laughs> never rode a thousand cc bike in my life, but he said, do you want to ride a thousand cc as well? So I jumped on that and went pretty well on it and uh, even though it wasn't a deal for the following year I ended up keeping on at him, keeping on at him and um, managing to get something worked out there that I could ride for him the, the following year to do my first ever TT in Northwest and the international, the big international road races where I'd just done the national, the Irish nationals stuff the year previous in 2017. So I was like, the perfect situation, a, a team that I know are really good and it's the kind of team that you want to go do your first TT with. So it was, um, yeah, moved on to that in 2018 and, and yeah, it just went way better than I expected. I, I put my homework in to learn the course, did over 100 laps in, in the car. The TT organisation team really did help me to learn the course with Johnny Barton and Milky Quill. They take you around for laps in the car and teach you all the little little things that, that really help you figure the course out. Uh, watching onboards, I was watching onboards every day to try and like soak it all in. It's honestly so difficult, like more difficult than you can ever imagine trying to learn 38 miles of, of track and you don't want to go there not knowing it all because it's not the case of like, oh, you'll just be slow if you don't learn it well. It's like you could be risking your life. Like if you if you don't know well enough, if you if you make one mistake, that could be that. So I didn't want to go there half assed. I wanted to go there and do it properly and actually use the PlayStation game a, a ton that year, which everybody sort of laughed at, but the the guys who built the PlayStation game like laser scanned the TT course so that it was like an exact representation of the TT course. Whilst using a controller is not the same as riding a bike in real life, the course was still the same. So it was good to learn it for that. And I'd actually played the game that much um, <laughs> just before the TT, my first ever TT in 2018. I was second in the world leaderboards on the on the PlayStation game <laughs> because I just played it. I was playing it every day just to learn and learn and learn. Hours and hours every day of doing that on boards, doing laps in the car, taking trips over, doing what I could to to do it right. So yeah, had that um, uh, really good first year. Was ended up being the second fastest newcomer of all time. Uh, behind Hickey and not not far behind Hickey who's like the f fastest man uh, ever around the TT course now so it's um, it's not it wasn't too bad you know what I mean uh, we'd not rode I'd not rode a thousand cc bike a whole lot it was sort of my first real year on a thousand so got on really well the team were awesome and I still have so much respect for them and still use a lot of things that they taught me in that year, um, John Burroughs and and the, and the guys, um, yeah, they're an awesome team, and 
um, yeah, as I say, I still still remember and and le uh, use a lot of things that they taught me in that in that year. It was uh, dead useful to me. So it was uh, <laughs> it was really cool. And um, going back to the uh, the PlayStation game, it was dead dead funny because uh, the creators of the game actually come back to me after seeing what I did in my first year, having played the game so much and used um, the game as a utility for like learning the course so well. They ended up coming back to me and saying, oh, we want to feature you on the game the next year, which I was over the moon with that. But they were like, no, we want you to be the main rider. We want you to be on the front cover, everything. So it was like absolutely crazy, really. <laughs> you grow up as a kid playing bike games and then all of a sudden you're on the front cover of one and um, and, and in, a, in the game, you can play as yourself in the game. That's That, that was mad for me, <laughs> to be honest. A lot of people are different at the TT. Like a lot of people have different attitudes. Some are like, in the zone and want to be left to their own devices sort of thing but it's the best place in the world the the two weeks at the at the, at the tt is the best two weeks of the year like so i'm just there enjoying it like i just want to live every single second of it and enjoy it and have fun and and not take it too seriously and i think you got to do that certainly in your first few years but even now, like looking towards my fourth year next year, I don't see why I'm going to change my mindset at all. Really, um, it's been keeps progressing really well in the right direction. Why would I? Why would I change it? You know, I spent all practice week doing wheelies and stoppies and messing around and setting really good lap times, and I'm like, I don't know how it's happening because I'm just literally having fun messing around like goofing about on the bike um it's it just it's stuff that makes me smile inside my helmet it's not for anyone else it's not like i'm oh, i'm showing off for anyone i'm, I'm literally doing these things like do, trying to see how big a stoppy i can do into the into the craig into the craig navarre during practice week and uh, just because it like it puts a massive smile on my face and I'm like this is this is awesome like getting a ride that it's the best 38 miles ever like the best track in the world so I just want it like every you only get to go there once a year I want to make the most of every single like mile that I do there so I don't want to be like super in the zone and like serious about coming in and going, oh, that's not the lap time that I wanted, I need to go faster. And you find yourself, it just all just goes away in front of you then. Like, you you don't you don't enjoy it. And I want to enjoy it. If, you, if you're not enjoying it, what's the point? You know, <laughs> go do something else that you're not risking your life. So for me, I'm just out there having fun, like smiling in my helmet, having the best time and um yeah uh, it was definitely um well, it's one of the things john burroughs taught me in my first year and he said go out and treat it like a sunday ride and and i do just that like you would like with your mates where you pull a few wheelies and enjoy it and clive padgett says to me on the on the grid for every race not just at the tt and he was like remember just have fun you know and for me, that's the, that's the best thing ever. Because if I'm not having fun, I think I'd ride slower as well. And I don't want to do I don't want to do it if I'm not having fun. Like if I'm not enjoying it, well, I've got to do something else. So I race bikes because yeah, I love winning, but I just love racing bikes. Like every second of it. Like when you had a great battle with someone and they beat you and you end up second, it was still a great battle and you still had like a ton of fun like battling them and um racing your bike around like i'd say all the time but i'm living the dream i'm living my dream so i want to make the most of of it as as often as i can really the start line of the race is a little bit different because you always get nervous before the start of a race like it 
you'd be like any racer that says they're not nervous before the starters line. Um, so you got you got the nerves there, but you're super excited for it. And it's not nervous that you're scared something's going to happen. It's just nervous more about that you're not going to do as well, maybe or I'm not sure. It's it's the TT start line is a different thing. It's different. I feel to sitting on a grid, and I noticed it more than ever this year. Going from the TT start line and all the everything going on, and there's like a there's a bit of an eerie feeling on the on the start line to the TT. You know, like everybody knows that there is a risk there that you know you might not come back. It's not one of the things you like talking about, but there's just that little bit more of everybody's just a bit quieter and a little bit more nervous than you get anywhere else and that's certainly a weird feeling so after i went uh, after we were at the tt this year the next race for me was knock hill bsb which i'm normally nervous on the start line of bsb as well like you're nervous because you want to do well like you're nervous but excited and um i noticed it massively that how not nervous I was on the on this on the start line of knock hill BSB and I was like sat in the second row and desperate to win but I just noticed that I wasn't feeling anywhere near the same as I was on the start line of the TT the week before you know it's so different and the TT's a TT it's the, it's the best thing isn't it so moving forward to the future for me uh I just want to keep living the dream, man. <laughs> I just want to keep racing motorbikes around and obviously want to win and I want to progress at the TT. I want, I've had my first podium. I'm now looking forward to standing on the podium more and hopefully the top step. Obviously it's, it's a goal you want to keep moving forward, but also in short circuit, like at BSB as well, I want to, I've been racing in Superstock and proved that I'm a front runner and competitive for the championship in Superstock. So I want to move forward. I want to be on a superbike and see where that takes me as well. There's not many riders that that are able to do road racing and short circuit racing competitively. Um, so I want to do that. I want to I want to change it up. You know, I want I want to show that it is possible to do to do these things you know to do more than one of them and yeah as i said just just keep living the dream because i get to race bikes as my job and what's honestly cooler than that <laughs>